Hi, I'm Charles Band, and I want to take all of you back about 33, 35 years, maybe 36 years, which was pretty much the dawn of the video business. So back in a uh, little history, back in the late 70s, maybe 77, 76, 77, uh, this whole idea of a video cassette, which back then was the Betamax, a format that's now uh, extinct, um, was being talked about. And there was a fellow uh, who is known as the, the godfather of the video industry, Andre Blay. And he felt since a beta machine was coming out at that time, that people would want to pay $50, this is back 35, 36 years ago, to watch a movie at home. Um, so people thought he was kind of crazy because who's going to spend that kind of money? And he went and he licensed uh, 20 movies from 20th Century Fox, uh, amongst them, uh, I think it was Patton and some of those older, well-known Fox films. And uh, those first few releases were coming out that year. I read about it and being a collector of just about everything, I thought what an awesome idea. And uh, of course, I, I believe that this would be huge because I used to have a 16 millimeter and other ways to screen movies at my house back in the day. I was in my uh, mid twenties. So I thought, well, you know, I know how much pleasure I get from watching a movie at home, which remember nobody back then was doing. This did not exist. This is pre-internet, pre-everything. If you were interested in a movie, you either had to wait for it to come on late night TV, if it ever did, or maybe see it at some revival house, or if it was a current weird ass movie, you would go to the, the local grindhouse movie theater. But the idea of at whim, at your call, being able to see a movie uh, did not exist. So I thought, well, this has got to be awesome. So I was very excited. And I thought, well, maybe what I can do is acquire the rights to a bunch of weird uh, and successful independent movies at that time and start my own label. I'll be the second label out there after uh, Mag Video, which was Andre Play's label. So I started going to some of the distributors I knew. Again, I was making movies. I had made maybe four or five films at that time. I'd made Crash and Mansion of the Doomed and the X-rated but not so X-rated Cinderella and Laser Blast and anyways during that era and I started to acquire the rights from these distributors who thought they had found some lunatic who was buying these video rights you know and I was licensing some of these rights for like Flesh Gordon and uh, other films for it per for perpetuity meaning I licensed them forever worldwide for like five thousand dollars today of course that's absurd, but back then no one knew what this was and those guys thought it was found money. So I started acquiring the rights and I decided to uh, call that uh, video company back in 77, uh, Mita, Mita Home Entertainment, Mita, M-E-D-A, was my first wife's name, first name, and you'll probably see a poster fly by in a minute. And that was the, the birth of the first independent home video company after Mag Video. There were only a couple of us. So we had, again, pictures like Flesh Gordon and Groove Tube and Tunnel Vision, a few of my own movies, some of the public domain films that were sort of obvious and famous at the time. And all of a sudden, as a, as a backroom hobby, which is what this was, because my whole energy was making movies, uh, Mita uh, became really successful and we were shipping first 10s, then 20s, then 40s. And we had to ship in two formats, to give you a little history. We had to ship in Beta, Betamax, and VHS, which was the new format. And there was a war between these formats in the late 70s. And uh, no one was really sure who was gonna win, even though Beta by Sony, the Betamax, was, uh, was, first, uh, first, was the first thing introduced. So as the end of the 70s approached, and I was much more interested in making movies, the business was growing. I brought in some partners who at the end of the day I wasn't unbelievably happy with. Betamax disappeared, and it became only a VHS business. And at that time, because of my movie endeavors, uh, I was prepping Parasite, things were growing in, my, in that world. And because of not being so happy with my partners, I decided to sell Mita Home Entertainment, which I did. And uh, pretty much overnight, uh, it became bigger and bigger, and they turned it into Media Home Entertainment. So if you have the old Mita boxes, that's pre my sale. And afterwards, they became Media Home Entertainment. But having a real bug for home video and not wanting to um, you know, get out of that end of things entirely, I thought, well, let me start another label, make this one more edgy and more weird and concentrate primarily on just horror films, really bizarro horror films at the time. So in 79, late 79, I came up with the idea of Wizard Video. And Wizard Video um, was gonna be the home of like 
Italian Lucio Fulci movie, Zombie, Fear, um, domestic films like Boogeyman, uh, I Spit on Your Grave, and others. And again, I began to acquire those rights. Uh, again, not expensive, not quite as cheap as in 1977, because people were beginning to catch on. But I built up quite an inventory of, of these rights, and I started to release early uh, wizard video, um, video cassettes into the marketplace, which was beginning to explode by 1980. And there was a certain amount of success, even though, again, it was sort of my backroom thing. And around 1980, after we had had maybe 15, 20 releases, it dawned on me that, you know, the stores were hungry, video stores were hungry for, um, for product. There were not that many movies. Today, there's too many movies, you know, an abundance of films. And because shelf space was everything, because you really wanted to be able to have your cool movies on the shelf, uh, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to release my movies, the Wizard Video movies that I licensed, in this big box format? Um, copying kind of what the porno guys were doing back then. Because again, keep in mind, this was before rental. The idea of renting a movie was really around 80, 81. So if you wanted a movie, you had to buy it. And your average movie, whether it was an independent on Wizard or Mita, or it was Mag Video, Fox, and other labels, that was about 50 bucks. So you had to shell out 50 bucks. This is like 33 years ago. Not a, you know, not a little money. But if you wanted a porno, okay, it was like a hundred bucks. It was crazy, because that was the only way. But the idea of bringing a porno in your home was also extra cool and very unique, since back then the only way you could see a porno was to go to a, usually a sleazy movie theater. So I thought, what a cool idea. Let me, let me do that. Let me go and, uh, and let me try to release a few of these wizard movies in this big box format, okay? And that was a, a super success. The video stores loved it, the fans seemed to really like it. So for about two years, every Wizard release was released in these big oversized boxes. And, uh, you know, kids who grew up in, um, at that time, who were going to the video store, because it was such a thrill, especially if you had never been able to buy a movie, and eventually you could rent them much cheaper, obviously. Uh, they would really be attracted to these big boxes. And shortly thereafter, other people followed suit. Other competing labels did the big boxes. Disney did big boxes, even though they were in the white clamshell. So the early days of video, which a lot of people now who are older and professional remember fondly, had these big, crazy wizard video boxes. So that's kind of the story. I'm going to end it, and then I'll tell you what's going on right now. The ending of the story is I became a very prolific filmmaker. And I didn't have time to acquire rights and be sort of in the video business. So even though Wizard continued for a few more years, by 82, 83, the shelf space of the video stores full. They didn't want the big boxes anymore because they took up too much room. So everything shrunk back to the regular size VHS boxes. And at that time, I gave the distribution rights to a company called Vestron Video. I was already involved with them. They're the guys who made Dirty Dancing, as an example. I was already involved with all my new movies. You know, we had made films at that time were all being distributed on video by Vestron Video, ironically. So they became the distributors for a while for Wizard Video. I sort of let that go because I didn't have that energy to keep going out there and finding movies. And then I put my time into making all the movies a lot of you guys know about, all the pictures in the 80s, you know, Troll and Ghoulies and From Beyond and Reanimator and so forth and so on. So now, dissolved many years later, like 30 years later, I keep hearing from people that there's a groundswell of, of collectors uh, for these, well, for VHS, old VHS tapes to begin with, since they're, it's part of the early days of the home video uh, industry, but especially these big boxes. and. Every time I would get a letter from someone, especially I met this wonderful guy, Eric Frederick, uh, at a convention uh, last year, and he was telling me this is, there's a whole world out there of people who grew up with these videos, who love these videos and these big boxes, and who collect them. I knew nothing of this. He said, hey, just go on, you know, whatever it is, uh, eBay and stuff, and check it out. Sure enough, these boxes that I haven't thought about for so many years, you know, in not good condition because they didn't stand the test of time so well since they're big. You know, they're going for 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 300 bucks. You know, I was like, whoa, there's like a crazy market out there. And, you know, as fate would have it, around that time, some months ago, uh, we here at Full Moon have been trying to clean up our warehouse space because I'm a super crazy collector and I've had some warehouses sort of off campus that have stored things since the, um, well, since the early 80s. And I knew there was a lot of stuff there. We had recently discovered uh, some of these, which I don't know what to do with yet, but I, I'll figure it out. You know, I also had a, a video game label, briefly, called Wizard Video Games. And I had uh, two uh, not successful <laughs> experiences. I published the Texas Chainsaw Massacre video game and the Halloween video game. 
Not successful because I was about 10 years ahead of my time and this was for the Atari system and these games were about as complex as Pac-Man. So it didn't work out, spent some money, folded it up, but I knew that I had a bunch of these boxes, just the boxes, you know, from 30 odd years ago. I knew they were there and I had talked about that some months ago. And so I thought, well, it's time to go back and see what we got. I also wanted to find some of my old posters. I wanted to frame them. So we went back into uh, the big mess of one of these warehouses. And what we found, which was super awesome, is about 15,000, 16,000 perfect condition, big VHS boxes. Um, I'm going to show you a couple. Um, any of you remember these classic bizarre movies? Zombie, Fear, Demoniac. So what I, I, we found these, I didn't know how many there were, but they were, now we didn't find, there's no videos, there's no clamshells, these are just the original boxes. And because they were in boxes, 300, 400, 500 each in a box, sitting forever in the dust, they were virtually in perfect condition, you know, 30 odd years later. So I was trying to think, what can I do that would be fun, fun for the fans, fun for collectors, fun for people who maybe know about this, but weren't a young kid back in those days. Maybe you were a young kid in the 90s, and that's when you discovered Full Moon and Puppet Master. I thought, well, why don't I go, and I have all the masters, all the original masters, let's recreate the tapes on VHS. So the tapes uh, inside these boxes will be um, the original program. Uh, and of course, let's go get the clamshells, which still exist, the black clamshell. And because there are a limited amount of boxes, I mean, I wish I'd found thousands, you know, for each title there were, I found as low as maybe 180, 170, and as high as maybe 390. I figured, well, what I should do is I should uh, hand number each box and sign it on the spines, because it's a little part of video history, uh, which is what we're doing. And uh, therefore, when you, uh, if you choose to purchase one of these, and it's only 50 bucks, you know, I was advised, charge higher, they're rare, they're collectible, they'll be gone in a heartbeat. I figure, you know, 50 bucks is affordable, and when they're gone, they're gone. So each one is numbered, and uh, I don't have the numbered ones here, but as an example, Return of the Zombies, let's say it's a, there's 180 of these boxes. So on the, on the spine, you'll see, you know, 01 of 180 and my signature, and inside will be the actual original program. Uh, but what's cool is these are the original boxes and they're, as you can see, like in super perfect condition. So that's a little bit of the history of, um, of Wizard Video and my days, pioneer days in the, in the video business. Uh, there are 36 of about 80 titles that Wizard um, released over the years that we actually found the boxes for. So those 36, if you go to our website, wizardvideocollection.com, uh, we're going to do four a month, not to overwhelm everyone. So starting in February, February uh, 12th, you'll be able to purchase uh, the first four, and then March will be the next four. So for basically uh, nine months, you'll be able to purchase uh, whatever we have. And once they're gone, they're gone. So uh, it's going to be fun, and I'm, I'm glad I found these. I'm, I'm glad I'm able to talk about this because a lot of people don't know of my history in the super early days of video. I mean, day one, literally day one, I was there, and it was a trip. And it's amazing today to me still to be able to, whether it's on Blu-ray or VOD or pay-per-view or whatever the delivery system is today, there's so many. It's still a thrill to be able to say, you know, I want to watch whatever. I want to watch uh, Jason and the Argonauts and I want to watch it tonight. And that's something that today I think people have no idea that privilege never existed back not that many years ago. Couldn't do that. So that's fun. That's unique. And uh, so are these, uh, so is this collection I found. So I hope you uh, enjoy looking at them and watching them and knowing that it's a little, little piece of the uh, of video history.